some way of cross-referencing all the IDs that you've got in corpuses and you know, the employees, the same as the vendors, the same as all that kind of stuff. Well, it turns out, you know, this is so obvious and it's such a perfect name. There's a site on it now called sameas.org. The you know, same as the keyword, the semantic web, it literally means that this URI, which refers to a reference in the real world, is referring, it means the same as this other one. So again, it just created a triple that says this is the same as that. You can go back to node folding and snap that back together again. All these folks at sameas.org did exactly what you, know, you could have or should have done in your corporate system. In this case, I typed in four columns, which is where we have to be from, and this system went out and interrogated the web and found two things that are really pretty interesting. The first thing is it disambiguated about a dozen different uses of the, of the, you know, the lexeme four columns. It's like a word sense in WordNet or something like that. You know, when you have mole and all meanings of mole don't mean the same thing. In this case, all the things you find out that are called four columns aren't the same thing. One of them is a city or town. Then there's a library, that's what you call it, the four columns library. There's a newspaper, there's an airport, there's a, you know, that's about a dozen of these. But the interesting bit then is in each case, it went out and found five or six URIs that all refer to the same city in this case, or the same library, or the same airport. And it just said, you know, found them in DBpedia, found them in Freebase, in Geonames, Humble. I don't even know what that one is. Something. I don't know where it found it. Something. And it's literally just saying these are the same as each other. So you could harvest this data if you needed to, you know, compile a bunch of information about four columns. You might as well grab this and snap the things together. And that's how this works. So yeah, I, I, I said something about schemaless development. You know, who needs that stinking schema? All that kind of stuff. We're now going to kind of reintroduce it back in. It really is it's safe and useful. But I, I wanted to I describe this in, in the way I did because people have a tendency to come with semantic web stuff and they see classes and they see properties and they take what they already know and they put what they already know and the labels they see in front of them and they design traditional systems with semantics. I wanted to try and bust that a little bit here, but now we're going to reintroduce schema because it's similar but different. The, probably the biggest difference is that the schema here in semantic land is more logical than physical. It's not bound up with the structure. When you think about a relational system, when you want an employee concept, you build an employee table, and you put rows in the employee table, and the stuff over there in the vendor table is, you know, it's physically, structurally separate. But here it's going to be physically and structurally the same. It's just the means of doing it. The other thing that's even more fun, it takes a minute for this coin to drop, is uh, it can be late bound. So again, in an object oriented system or in a relational system, when you say insert, or when you say new, the thing that you just inserted or the thing that you just made a new object of is of the type of whatever class or table you were dealing with. Here, we invent things, we create new instances or individuals, as we call them, and then much later we'll declare, oh yeah, that's an employee, and oh yeah, it's a person, and it's a whatever it is. Not only can we do that late, very late, but we can do it many times. You know, any one thing can be multiple types, which is, again isn't the case in a traditional system. So if we go back to our little triple store here. So if we discover that someone else has invented a class that we think, you know, well, I'd like to use that, in sort of the same way you might have a person class in a traditional system. Here you might have found it somewhere on the web. We've got one that we call gist. There's a, a gist definition of what a person is. It has a URI like everything else. So we late findingly say that Dave McComb is a person. And again, it's just a triple. Again, there's a URI, and this one is in the RDF namespace, and it says an RDF type means what we used to think of as is a, you know, 
an object oriented. This is a that. So that's how that thing snaps together. But you don't have to be limited to classes that other people made up. You can make up your own. And you make them up with a series of rules about, you know, this rule we've talked about what is a formal definition of a class. This is an incredibly simplistic one, and it maybe sounds tautological, but I'm going to make up a definition that says this new kind of class is anyone who's the parent of someone else. So I just made up the class. That's my definition. 